Good morning, everybody. This is Christy. I am the Intimate Warrior. I thank you so much for stopping by. And as always, I send you love. I hope you all had a blessful and fulfilling Easter and understand the true meaning of what Easter surely signifies for you in your life and the lives of those around you. So yesterday's video, I kind of just was talking. Um, and I really appreciate those who, who who listen and listen completely to my videos. If you can make it to the end, I, I am so grateful for it. Um, you are hearing my experiences. You're hearing things that I'm adding to it. Um, types of wisdom that I have been given of course, that go with my experiences, and therefore, hopefully, you can take in what I am sharing. And I spoke about the Ten Commandments yesterday. It um, is not a coincidence that I spoke about it. It's not a coincidence that I ended up watching it on TV um, the night previously. Um... On April the 2nd, I saw the the Ark of the Covenant and the Cherubim in full of flame on fire within my center of vision and up close. I received things. I know that when things are up close, that it's within me, that it is here at this very moment. When things are kind of further off and things have progressed way out into the distance um, since the beginning of me being able to receive um, internal visions. There are times when things were just so far off. I would see Christ so far off in the distance. And then eventually I would see him right up on me. And that means that the level of work that I have done has gotten closer. So yesterday, as I finally got to a, um, a sitting point last night, I ended up saying fornix, fornix, over and over again. And so I wanted to talk about the fornix today and then hopefully make some sense about it for you. The it says in the Bible in Matthew seven fourteen, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Um the tomb of Amun, also known as the Great Amen, which is biblically, which biblically mentions in the Bible that Jesus is the Amen. The King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the Fornax constellation here, is what I'm going to be talking about. The fornix is an organ connected to the penile gland by an attachment known as the stria pinealis, which means straight line to the pineal. The fornix folds over and is connected to the foramen commune anterius. The Bible says that the amen 
the faithful in the true witness, um, which is mentioned in Revelations 3.14. And... And it reads in Revelation 3.14, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. And... Um, now, of course... When we say our prayers, we end a prayer with Amen. There is a parallel between Amen, which is Jesus, and the connection between spirit and matter, and the foreman, which, when you split foreman, comes for Amen. Arch connects the um, the hemispheres of the brain. So found in the center of the brain is the fornix. It is a vaulted tomb or an arched structure in the body which connects the left and the right hemispheres of the brain. Um, The fornix is a, a C-shaped bundle of nerve fibers in the brain that acts as the major output tract of the hippocampus. The fornix also carries some um, afferent fibers to the hippocampus from structures in the um, in the there's a separate separate sections within the brain that it carries information to. Pretty much it's about carrying information. And the fornix is a part of the Olympic system. I mentioned um, I think it's in the video in relationship to what's coming up here with the Jupiter and Saturn and Moon conjunction that these we are going to be working with the Olympic system. And according to the cell salt, according to those zodiacal signs. When the fornix is cut or severed or not working properly, not receiving its full flow, it causes memory loss. Which which will affect long-term information, such as past events. Now, of course, as a human being, if we cannot recall past our own our own past um, life information, that also is um, an indication that it is not flowing properly through there. It is the fornix is not receiving information. Spiritually, this goes much deeper than just our own lifetime. This goes into other lifetimes. You know, the process of becoming and being transforming and, be, and receiving Christ consciousness has a lot of things that have to come into play. It's not just, hey, you got to open your root chakra and make it to your crown. There has to be continuous flow from your root chakra to your, your crown. There is a lot that goes into play. We have a lot of organs. We have a lot of nerve and, um, fibers. A lot of things have to begin to flow and function. The and um, please bear with me here. 
as I flip back and forth to page to page in my notes here. So the fornix, like I said, is at the center of the brain. Now, in relationship to the constellation of fornix, Fornax which means um, furnace. So we all know what a furnace is because this originates from, um, if you look back into um, the meaning of Fornax, she was the goddess of bread and baking, which in order to bake bread, you needed some form of heat and a cooking element, a furnace furnace. Something that is going to create tons of heat where you're going to see flames, fire. And this is the center of the Ark of the Covenant, which sits within the tomb of our brain. And when it is in full function, the fire resembles, or the flames resemble wings, or the wings resemble flames. <sighs> so, You can start to think of how the importance of things are working here or everything that is coming together. Um, so the fornix is the place where Christ's consciousness awakens within the hemispheres um, because it's connected now. It remember that um, God says that he will place his law within your mind and within your heart and you shall know his name and his name shall be written and he will call you his children It has to be awakened within us. But there has to be a movement. There's always a movement within ourselves. That even if other people don't realize what we're doing, even if other people don't realize we are good people or not, Our actions are still a reflection of the steps we are taking internally. Yet a lot of this is an internal process that nobody will get a chance to witness. Yet it's still a reflection of everything we're doing in our lives. Because we're going to speak better. We're going to act better. We're going to make better choices within our lives. We're going to be more at peace with ourselves and with the complete existence of everything. Yet other people can even see that as complete insanity. I have been progressing here again, this past month for myself. 
has been a lesson after a lesson after a lesson after let's purge this, let's purge this. It's been continuous. And then there's some nights that I am not receiving anything. Well, when I say anything, it's like one thing I'm receiving because I'm usually receiving an abundance of information that I have to try to compile together and there's just so much. I didn't last night, I actually didn't receive anything last night. But I've been feeling, my brain has been trying to, you know, and I'm saying it's creating these scenarios. My brain has been trying to create scenarios that are absurd. Because if you knew me way back when, probably at least three years ago still, four years ago, definitely five years ago, oh my gosh, I was terrified of everything. If my family wasn't at home, my mind was thinking up all types of crazy scenarios that was going to make me become more insane. I would literally drive myself insane, creating an idea that something was terribly going wrong. And if I hadn't had a response back, oh my gosh, I would become so deathly sick. And then, of course, my actions, my words, when they finally came home, oh yeah, it was crazy. So that's what's been happening for myself for a couple of days here. My mind has been trying to play these tricks on me. Yet... I'm not seeing them as playing tricks on me. I'm not seeing it as my ego is trying to win. I'm actually seeing it as my mind is being purified of those types of thoughts that I used to think. And it, it's happening a whole lot quicker, like I said. All of my, my lessons and purification is, is happening back to back, back to back. Because I'm getting closer to a point, uh, an end, a definite end of a cycle. Because here we are at April, the number nine, end of a cycle. Regardless if you're at the level I'm at or not, you are at an end of a cycle. It doesn't mean you're done because there's still another number. There's still going to be another day. There's another month, another year. We aren't done with anything until we decide to leave Earth. We are always going to expand more. We will just, we won't be at a previous level. So I really am asking you to not ever think that there's an end to it. If you want to be a healthy individual in your life, you can't just eat right for a month and expect it to um, or become a physical um, active for a month and then expect to be a bodybuilder for the rest of your life. You are continuously building on that. And every time you're exercising or working out and eating right, you're building on it. Yet you're not lifting the same little weights that you were lifting when you first began. You're now at a heavier or a higher level. You've taken in more knowledge. You've expanded on yourself. Your body is growing. You're ready for something more or heavier. It's the same thing with our spiritual journey. I'm excited all the time. I get excited all the time to learn more and um, I hope that you are as well so I uh, the importance of and going back to the fornix the fornix in the brain um, it is a triangular area of white matter in the brain, which is uh, resides between the hippocampus, which is associated with memories, emotions, and um, deeper motivation, and the hypothalamus, which is responsible for automatic responses. 
this is the area of the brain that allows your brain to experience um, proper brain wave cycles like beta, alpha, theta, and delta. We will experience these, these areas whether we are awake, whether we are physically and mentally relaxed, um, whether we are in deep meditation or during light REM sleep, and um, a delta which is associated with loss of bodily awareness. The So the constellation of Fornax is similar to the King's Chamber within the Great Pyramid of Giza. So I, I just wanted to share this with you, and I'm sorry for all the pauses here within my, my video. You know, on our path, again, we are learning to really trust in what we are being given. You know, I have asked early on in my process to be able to get to a point of receiving without having to close my eyes. And also that included to be able to hear more within my reality in my waking moments, which means that I wanted a continuous connection continuously. And um, I always feel connected, but then there's a difference between receiving information um, that is so vital to give. Um, so that's where I wanted to eventually get to. And I know that because me, I was just sitting here and all of a sudden, Fornix, Fornix, Fornix came into my brain. I knew I was receiving some type of information that was necessary to be shared, um, which also is in relationship to the um, what I received a couple of days ago in reference to the burning Ark of the Covenant and um, the Cherubim. Keep in mind, and I, I say this, I emphasize this, there is a process to this. I received the information a couple of days ago or saw the vision of the Cherubim, a flame, and it's still going to take time because the body has to catch up with what's taking place. You know, I also wanted to, I hope you don't mind me continuing this video, because yesterday was Easter and I had meant to do this. You know, early on in my process, when I was trying to figure out what I was seeing, because first I began to see the sparkles prior to ever beginning, you know, to create stillness and close my eyes, meditate, whatever it is you, you call it. Um, one night, I was lying there awake in the darkness of my room, and I saw the sparkles. And I, I brushed it off, just kind of saying that I was extremely tired. And I never saw them again because I would, if for, for a couple of weeks, I would instantly go to sleep. One night, I laid there again. 
and I, I saw the sparkles again. And as I continuously focused on them, I realized they were everywhere in my room and they were moving like shooting stars. They were back then mostly um, red and white. But as I developed a little bit more, they were all colors of the rainbow. But after that moment of me seeing them and was in such awe, I would stay up almost every single night as best as I could, focusing on the darkness and the sparkles and watching them and seeing what they would do. And I kept, then it developed into smoke haze. Like when you're actually in med a meditative state, you'll eventually start seeing smoke move. Um, clouds of smoke, whether yours can be gray, it could be pink, it could be whatever color um, it is for you. And <clears throat> they would just start coming into my inner vision. As I developed on that or kept focusing on it, I started to see and receive with my eyes shut, but in the complete darkness, visions. One such vision was that I received was, um, and these I didn't realize were premonitions that were going to take place. Early on in my process, I received a lot of things um, to not because of I uh, should be telling somebody about it or doing anything. It was, again, a part of my trust. Learning to see something that is being given to me, take that information in, and try to develop this information. Nothing was supposed to cause fear or, or change um, in my own personal reality. Change from within and trust. Well, one day I ended up seeing three crosses. And in my mind, because I still was learning about what all of this meant, I thought God was showing me the three crosses of during the crucifixion. And um, I wrote it in my journal and everything like that. But then a few week, a few days later, my husband and I went to this bluegrass festival. And it wasn't until that night I hit this, oh my gosh at the festival that we go to by the stage because they also have, um, it is a campground where of course they have festivals at, but they also have a church gathering. It's more of a church based um, campground. They put three crosses next to the stage um, some time ago and um, that's what I was seeing. I was going to this place and I was being given that um, type of premonition that something was going to take place because I also saw the three crosses and then a woman and a child. Um, and I, I'm not going to go into too much detail because um, that's part of my life and it's, it's really personal. But it was a premonition that I had received and um, something took place there as a result of me going there and doing what I had to do. And that's not the only time um, that I've had those types of visions that were foretelling me of where I was going. It used to happen a lot in the beginning and I don't have that type of um, information based on my current life. I have it more so of an internal process of growing instead of, you know, what tomorrow is going to bring me. That's not what I'm actually seeking. Seeking, I don't, I'm not worried about what tomorrow is going to bring because I know now my heart is going to bring me everything that I need. 
but that for myself, my own understanding is that it was to teach me to learn and to trust what I was actually seeing. Um, so I, I wanted to share that um, experience with you guys and I hope you find appreciation in it. So now that you know about the Fornix, um, that's a, that is something that you can find deeper understanding about, um, do your own research, whatever it is, um, it is in relationship to the chamber where things begin to start cooking. <laughs> that's my interpretation. So my funny interpretation. Um, so we are going to be, what is today, the 5th? So the 6th, 7th, and the 8th. Just, uh, I don't know what you're going to experience, of course, but you know that this is a major, um, any time that Jupiter and Saturn come together, it's there's a major, and a, a significant thing that can take place. And they are not as, as close as they were, of course, during um, Christmas, when they created the Christmas star. Now, I wanted to put this out there. So are you counting April the 6th, April the 7th, and April the 8th? Three days. And how this is so close to Good Friday and Easter. Three days. So, it's another thing to think about. Three days. Time is very significant, yet it's important to not place so much time on your process or so much expectation on it. I'm excited. Well, I guess I'm excited. I really don't know if I have an emotion. I am aware of this process and I'm trying not to think so much about it because then I get lost within what ifs and therefore it means that I'm not staying present within my every single moment. So I can't wait to figure out what this means for me. You know, because I'm not there yet and I'm not going to go ahead and assume um, that I know all the details. I just know it's going to be beautiful regardless of what takes place. This is Christy. Much love, health, and healing your way. I am bringing purpose to your life. Take care.